Lino was lying on the hospital bed, and there was Julia beside him, waiting for him to wake up. He got badly injured when he was fighting Marco. In the prequel of this movie, we were told that Marco was the one who had killed his brother. When he woke up, he found Julia beside him, and he suddenly asked her whether she caught Marco, but she said she couldn't, Marco managed to escape despite being handcuffed by her. Lino was so mad knowing that Marco escaped from the police. Beside having killed his brother, it turns out that Marco was the only eyewitness who was able to put Arski in jail. Arski was also a corrupt cop who had killed Lino's boss, Charis. A few weeks later, Lino was fully recovered and he resumed his search for Arski by stalking his wife, Ain, hoping that Arski would someday come to meet her or his son. But his action got caught by Julia, who told him to stop what he was doing, because Charis, his former boss who had died, wouldn't like it. Julia then told Lino that she would station two officers around Ain's house, in case Arski would come back to his house. But Lino was so stubborn, later at the night he came again to Ain's house. When he arrived, he saw two cops were already there, but they left a moment later. Lino was inside his car, still keeping his eyes on the house, but suddenly three looking suspicious men came and broke into Ain's house. When she realized that some people broke into the house and wanted to harm her, she ran to her son's room, hiding herself there. Lino felt something wrong was happening inside the house, so he ran to the house. He bit the first man that stood in front of the house, down, and later on, he went inside to find another two, when he found them, he immediately landed an attack on those two men and managed to save Ain and her son. After he made it to take all those three men, he called the police for help. Julia was there to catch those three criminals. She was upset at Lino for not calling the police as soon as possible when he saw an act of crime was about to happen, on the contrary, he let himself get involved in this matter. Julia then asked him to rejoin the police force in the narcotic bureau, and she gave him Char's car's key, so he could rebuild that car, and use it to fight the crimes. Later that night, Lino went to the warehouse to find the car. When he got inside the car, the memory of Charis who got shot when he was inside that car crossed his mind. A year had passed, Lino and his team were successfully fighting some of the drug criminals and he also made an impressive restoration on Charis' old car. That car was ready for an awesome journey to catch the drug dealers. There were many impressive car chasing scenes in this movie, and we're going to watch it soon. Lino drove his car at full speed to chase an Audi car that was suspected of bringing an outstanding amount of drug inside. The car chase went all the way, almost to the Spanish border, and when Lino realized it, he tried to dodge it by his car, hoping that it could stop the car, and he did it. He managed to hit the car, it flew above the sky for a while and ended up landing on the ground, totally broken. They caught the drug dealer with the help of a Spanish police officer named Alvaro. Lino later found out that Alvaro was Char's friend who was sad by the news of Char's death and it turned out, he was also looking for Marco and Arski, for their involvement in drug trafficking in Spain. They went back to their base after successfully catching the drug dealer. A moment later, Ain came to the base to see Lino, and when Julia saw her, she found out that Lino and Ain were having a serious relationship. Julia seemed to be a bit sad about this fact, considering that she was in a relationship with Lino before. Meanwhile at the other scene, we could see Arski who was still able to roam freely around France. He stopped for a while in the middle of the road to relieve himself, while observing his surroundings. He then made a call to an agent called Yuri, to arrange a plan to kill Marco. But Yuri refused to be involved in his plane, because he thinks it was too risky. Soon we can find out that Oreski's plan to kill Marco was to eliminate the traces of his crime and that Yuri was a right man of a division head of narcotic bureau, called Alexander who was always helping Arski. And the fact that Arski knew where Marco is. Marco is hiding somewhere in some place. Back to Lino who was busy rebuilding his car to find a way to attach some weapon on it. As we knew that he has an extraordinary skill in repairing and rebuilding cars. Lino made it to install his car with some weapon that would create some powerful and killer-able lightning and he said he would only use that power in a very dangerous, near-to-death situation. A moment after that, while he was taking a little rest, someone who claimed to be from his hometown called Lino and informed him that his godmother was severely ill and she asked him to come soon to the address she gave him. Lino then drove his car to find the location of the address he got. Shortly afterward, Lino arrived at the address he had been given and he also brought a bunch of flowers for his godmother. Lino then went inside a room and he was so surprised to see Marco was already there. We knew that Lino was looking for him all this time, so as soon as he saw him, he hit him right away without saying a word. Afterward, we found out that the person who called Lino earlier, was Yuri's subordinate, who did it deliberately, so that Lino could finish Marco off. 
And another fact about Marco was that he was hidden by the police all this time without Lino knowing about it, because he might kill Marco, because on the other side, the police still needed him as bait to get our ski. Somewhere else, Julia found out that Lino had found Marco, then she went right away to get Lino to stop him for killing Marco, but she was too late. She couldn't find them when she arrived at the location, and it turned out that Lino had brought Marco to the police station to meet Moss, his boss, to ask her the truth behind all of these problems. At the police station Marco stated the fact that the police was the one who helped him to escape and provided him a place to hide, and Julia knew about this all along. The police did this to protect Marco from Alexander, a division head of the Narcotic Bureau who had been following him, to help Arsky eliminate the traces of his crime. So the point is, Alexander is the one who helped Arsky to cover his crimes. Moss and Marco were in the heat of an argument when suddenly, Yuri came and was ready to take over Marco. Initially, Moss couldn't let him take Marco, because he was a key person to reveal Alexander and Arsky's crimes, but then Yuri gave her an arrest warrant, so she couldn't do anything but to let him take Marco. But suddenly, Lino threw a flashbang, a kind of sound attack that could hurt the ears, out of nowhere. He then grabbed Marco by his head, and dragged him outside the building, knowing that if Alexander got Marco, the latter would be killed to death and he would never be able to find our ski. Lino was about to escape and brought Marco along, but a bunch of cops came and ambushed him, so the fight of one man against many was happening, and it was so epic and in the end Lino could take all the cops down. Of course, the story should go on, Lino can't die at this moment. After taking down all the cops and all Alexander's men, Lino successfully managed to run away by driving his car. He called Alvaro and asked him for help. Alvaro was the only person he could ask for help, because later we find out that Marco has the immunity to the law in France, thanks to some high official from the police force who protect him as he was the main witness of a very serious crime, so the only way to punish him is by taking him to the Spanish police force. The car chase scene between Lino and the police forces was so intense and mind-blowing, as many cars were on the crowded road trying to hunt him down. Julia was notified that Lino escaped from the police station and brought Marco with him, so she went right away to chase Lino down, until at some point she managed to spot Lino's car and followed him down to the tunnel of Dry River, but it seems that Julia lost control of her car, so her car crashed the wall of tunnel so hard that made her car flipped over and crashed many times. Lino was so worried when he saw her car was flipping over in the air, but thank God she was fine with a little bruise on her head, but she didn't care about it at all. She resumed to hunt Lino by taking another police car. What a badass Julia. Lino was hiding among the bushes, hoping Julia and the police officers who were trying to chase him down couldn't find him. He then called Alvaro and they planned to meet somewhere quiet, far from the police's surveillance. Shortly afterward, Alvaro came to meet him by driving a van, not an official police car, so he could disguise and hide from the French police team. Lino handed Marco over to Alvaro, hoping that he could be convicted and tried for all his crimes by the Spanish police force. After safely handing Marco over to Alvaro, Lino felt a bit relieved that his mission was almost done but suddenly, Alvaro felt that the French police force were trying to take Marco, so Lino planned to distract police's attention to make sure that Alvaro could go back to Spain without too many hassles. Lino tried to deceive the police by distracting their attention, so the French police would go after him. Lino could easily take all the police cars down in a process, but Julia came right behind him, then crashed her car into his, and Lino car lost control, and flipped over. Julia managed to stop him but she was so shocked when she couldn't find Marco in Lino's car. Later on she found out that Alvaro had already brought Marco. She called her teammate to do a check on all the cars in the borderline to find Marco. We got back to Alvaro who had to turn his car and found another way to go back to Spain, when he found out that French police were doing an inspection at the border. But in the middle of the road, a car blocked the road, and it turned out they were Yuri and his men. Knowing that Yuri was also on a mission to hunt Marco, he told the driver to keep going and run over the car in front of them, no matter what was going to happen. In the end, Alvaro successfully escaped from Yuri's men. And on the other side Julia and Lino were worried to death knowing that Alvaro and Marco might have been killed by Yuri's men. Lino was so worried that Yuri's men could catch Marco and it would put Alvaro in a dangerous situation. Then he asked Julia to let him go, so he could go and help Alvaro, and she let him go. Shortly after, he activated the lightning weapon on his car. Julia managed to find Yuri's men's car, so she tried to block it from the side. Lino was behind her with a lightning weapon activated, ready to take all Yuri's men down. He managed to take two cars down but couldn't get the other one, due to the battery's low power, so he has no enough power to activate the lightning weapon. On the other side, 
Julia intentionally crashed her car into Alvaro's car to make Alvaro's car lose its balance then flipped over the ground. Once Alvaro's car fell on the ground, she took Marco right away and left the place as soon as possible. Lino managed to take all the Yuri's men's car down and later he learned that Julia had brought Marco, so he rushed his car to find them. Lino tried to activate the lightning power and aimed it at Julia's car, but this time he did it moderately so it would not harm Julia and Marco knowing that Lino activated his lightning weapon, Julia switched the Carnos to add more power to the car, so it would run faster. Unfortunately, Lino's car somehow couldn't hold any more load, then proceeded to blow apart to pieces. Julia stopped her car when she saw Lino's car was blowing apart and felt so guilty for making his favorite car broken to pieces. Julia then apologized to Lino for what she did. While still mourning Lino's car, suddenly Yuri and his men came and opened fire on Marco. One of the police tried to calm the situation down and offered a negotiation, but Yuri just fired a shot to Marco, but he managed to protect himself behind a police officer and ran to Lino who was handcuffed inside Julia's car. The gunfight between Yuri and the police broke out and at the same time, Marco took Julia's car and ran away from there. Thankfully. Alvaro came to the scene and aimed a shot at Yuri. You deserve that Yuri. Marco was driving the car while Lino was in the passenger seat, tried to stop him. With all his might, Lino was finally able to make Marco lose his balance and crash the car into a tree. Marco was unconscious due to the hard crash, then Lino took him out of the car and dragged his body until he found a cafe at the border between France and Spain and then he made a call to a local police so they could find them here, at the cafe. When Lino was not aware, Marco got up and stabbed him with a fork, and Lino fell down to the ground right away, it was so hurt he couldn't manage to stand back on his feet. Marco then took the lady owner of the cafe as a hostage and was ready to kill her, to cover his crime, so no one could find out about it. Luckily, Julia had arrived at the cafe and pointed her gun at Marco Marco then told her to let him go, so the lady would be safe. Julia was afraid that he might kill the lady, so she dropped her gun to the floor, but suddenly, out of nowhere Julia launched her attacks at Marco, took her gun, and accidentally pulled the trigger and shot Marco down. She was so shocked and regretted what she did, knowing it could ruin her career. Lino got up out of nowhere and fired another shot at Marco, by doing this Lino wanted to protect Julia and her career. So Julia couldn't be blamed as the one who killed Marco because he was the one who shot him to death. A few days later in a car dumps, Lino's car was ready to be destroyed by the order of the police, and a man came riding his bike, and it turns OT that man was our ski, ready to work on another plan and that is the end of the movie. This movie ended with an open story, so it's up to the viewer's imagination to conclude its end story. As the movie comes to an end, one thing for sure that we have to put in our mind, that revenge is not the right answer. A proverb once said that, when one plans to take revenge, he must prepare two funerals, one for his enemy and the other one is for him.